Today we are going to uh, do a preliminary sales site evaluation for solar. Basically what that means, we're going to take a look at the roof, <clears throat> we're going to take a look at the electrical box, we're going to take a look at the basic specifications of, um, of solar, if it's going to work at this house, what it looks like. Then we're going to go inside and talk about a couple different proposals um, and see how the numbers shake out, answer questions, and kind of go through there. Okay, so here's our south-facing roof space. Um, a couple initial thoughts when we look at something like this. Um, number one is we see uh, this is a wood shake roof. And looking at the condition of that wood shake, it's pretty old. 15 years. 15 years. So a wood shake roof um, is very difficult to install on. Um, as a solar contractor, we would say we don't really want to install on that roof, a 15-year-old wood shake roof at all. So that would be a no. What we do want to see is a new roof, potentially. Um, composite shingle would be great, or there are other options. Beyond the roof surface, um, factoring in that Dave will be getting a new roof, which is great news, um, we've got an okay amount of space up here. The things I like about this roof are great orientation. We're almost due south. We double check this on Google Earth, and I have a handy compass here we can double check again. Um, so we're due south. We have a nice pitch angle up there, about 40 degrees which provides for optimal efficiency in Colorado, which is great. Um, if we were be able to go over the roof fence, we probably have room for more like 16 panels. Um, probably room for about a three and a half kilowatt system, depending on panel choices. Um, to initially determine a shade impact, we have a device called a sole metric device. This is a little $3,000 shade computer um, that one of my engineers brings on a more detailed site evaluation that will happen later um, and actually analyzes the shade on the, this particular roof or on any particular roof. The Solmetric device is pretty neat. It can actually take a digital photo through a fisheye lens um, of exactly where you're standing and within about 20 seconds can compute exactly at that point you know, when shade is going to be on there, from this tree, from that tree, what times of day, what months of the year, and quantify that down to a percentage. You know, shade in the winter time um, is very different than shade in the summertime. When you look at a production graph for solar, it's usually a nice bell curve production, meaning you're getting your big production in the summer months and a lot less production in the winter months, usually about half in the winter that you get in the summer. So if you lose some winter production due to shade, it's not as big of a deal as it would be if you're losing summer production in you know the big solar months of May, June, July, August, September. That's when you really don't want to lose anything, especially that's when the leaves are on the trees and the shade impacts tend to be larger. Uh, orientation in Colorado, and what is the best case scenario for a solar array? We find out that a array facing 168 degrees at a 40 degree pitch has the best um, production for solar in Colorado. The reason that a slightly southeast orientation does better than even due south is because of the afternoon cloud cover that happens in Colorado in the summer months and also based on the temperature effect. Huh. Um, as solar panels get hot, they tend to underperform. Their performance goes down. And so during the hot summer months, um, it's not uncommon at all to see uh, solar panels underperform dramatically um, based on individual you know, cells and units. Still, the production, you're still getting much more production in the summer months anyway because you're getting so many more sun hours per day. There are certain reasons why we want to mount solar panels with a 6-inch clearance or a 10-inch clearance to provide airflow, etc., etc. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the main panel and we're going to take a look at a couple things here. What I'm looking at here is I see that this is a 200 amp service panel, meaning Dave has 200 amps worth of service. Um, he has a bunch of breakers. Here's our full uh, description of all our different breakers and uh, where do they go to. To tie in a solar system to the main service panel of the house, we typically need one 30 amp breaker. That's what we're looking for. One of my uh, foremen, who is also a master electrician, would look at this and say, great, we can combine these two and these two and open up one 30 amp breaker 
and tie in right there, no problem. <laughs> I'm going to take my camera out here and take a photo of this main service panel. This is actually almost the perfect setup, but I'll close that in a second, um, for a solar um, array for the inverter location. So nice. two things basically happen with solar. We have the panels on the roof, and then we have the inverter. And we have a conduit that runs in between. So we're going to have to get a conduit over from the south side of the house over to here. Um, and we'll talk about different ways we're going to do that. And then we're going to mount the inverter. The inverter would most likely mount right here on the wall or could mount right on the inside of this wall, which is inside the garage. What I like about this setup a lot is this is a north-facing wall, which means it's cool. It's out of the sun. There are some trees right behind us here that you can see. Um, also like this setup here because we've got a little eave on this garage here which with inverter mounted on this wall will protect this area from rain and snow and hail and all that stuff. A uh, new solar installation, Excel comes out within a few weeks uh, and gives you a new meter. The new meter is capable of reading your production and essentially these little kilowatt hour lines start ticking backwards as you start making power and selling your excess power back to the grid. 4.1 kilowatts is going to offset, excuse me, is going to make about 141,000 kilowatt hours over the first 25 years. It's going to offset acid rain, smog emissions, and offset about 200,000 pounds of greenhouse gases. You know, offsetting 200,000 pounds of CO2 gases over 25 years, great. What does that really mean? Well, what it really means is you're looking at your meter spin backwards, and you're looking at your wireless display going, wow. I actually put solar on my roof, this works. I'm actually doing it. 